The first step of hazmat response has classically been walking into the unknown. Now drones face the unknown for us. Hazmat response is not fast. It takes much longer than many other forms of emergency response because you don't always know what you're dealing with and it's dangerous. We deal with biological threats, chemical threats, and nuclear threats. The problem is we don't always know which one it is. So we send a guy in there first with meters and hope he's all right because no single suit can protect you from everything. These are fathers and sons, mothers and daughters. Equipment is disposable, people are not. Sometimes we forget the ones going in to save lives are people too, and we have to protect them. We have a very progressive department here at Southern Manatee, and that's allowed us to develop new tech. We started talking about using drones back in 2015. We looked at other options, but platforms like DJI's Inspire and M210 series have more capabilities and are much more cost effective. Before we get too close to an incident, we kind of want to make sure that the drone won't cause a spark that would ignite something flammable. So we want to test them beforehand. So far, every test that we've done with DJI's aircraft have had positive results. None of them have had any flammability issues. We really wanted to use the drone for more than just your basic eye in the sky. We wanted to use the drone in a way that could take some of the burden off our tech, such as recon, hazard ID, metering, and remote sensing. We worked with a company to design a bracket that could hold a hazmat meter for us while we're flying the M210. And just simply by using the onboard camera, we can turn it around and look right at the meter and get real-time data. One of the great things about it is, is we can carry our handheld meters down there without having to actually carry the meter down there ourselves. With the new payload SDK, we're hoping to be able to integrate some of these sensors right into the aircraft itself. In the future, we're hoping to be able to deliver payloads into some of these hot zones, carry things like tools, supplies, or whatnot. Not only does drone technology keep us safer, but by dramatically reducing our response time, it keeps the public safer as well. This is changing the way things have been done for the last hundred years. And it's changing it for the better. We have a very progressive department here at Southern Manatee, and that's allowed us to develop new tech. We started talking about using drones like DJI's Inspire, or now the M200 series, back in 2015. Before we get too close to an incident, we kind of want to make sure that the drone won't cause a spark that would ignite something flammable. A simple spark from the drone could set off that atmosphere, so we want to test them beforehand so what we did is we decided to create a box that we can pump propane into it to create that flammable atmosphere for us. And inside that box, we put the aircraft and see what happens. Uh, so far, every test that we've done have been positive results. None of them have uh, had any kind of flammable issues. We ran it for a long period of time, very hard. They didn't light anything off and to basically prove that atmosphere was flammable in there besides the metering that we did, we set off a spark inside of the box to set off the propane. And it did set off in, 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 in dramatic fashion. It looked pretty awesome. After the explosion, we wanted to see if the M210 could fly again. Now, obviously, this isn't something we recommend anybody else do, but for the experiment, we wanted to make sure that we did this portion of the test as well. So we put new batteries in it, put new rotors on it, and to our amazement, the aircraft took off immediately. That was, was pretty impressive. <laughs> 